What's up, everybody? This next podcast, we're going to talk about me meeting royalty. All right, making a friend that's a royal friend. And we're going to talk about that crazy Dylan Dennis, Logan Paul fight. So check it out and enjoy. Right on. ハッチとは田舎町で生まれて移り住んだ新宿で育ち。この町で大きた。これまでの俺たちの What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Yamato Domashi podcast. My name is James, and I am joined by an association of royalty, high royalty, in fact, as Ensign was actually hanging out earlier with uh, someone that's known as the, the the prodigal son of the, the Thai royal family who's returned back to Thailand. So tell us a bit about that and that experience. Yeah, um, his uh, I, I really can't pronounce his name, so I just made a post on my uh, social media, but I, I just said Vash. We, we, we called him Vash when we were with him. But his name is like super long. And yeah. yeah, so I was called to meet him because uh, the guy that called me knew that I uh, go to Thailand a lot. And he felt that he I would be a good person for him to know. And, you know, like I said, I didn't know who he was. And when I met him, the guy was like a, like a regular dude. And when I, you know, when I really looked up to who he was, I was kind of taken aback that the humbleness and the the down to earthness that he had it, it, is something that I really take pride in as for myself that um, I don't want to change. I've seen so many people, you know, like kid, you know, like when they get famous, they change and they forget where they came from. And that was one of the things that I would never have wanted to do. You know, I, I mean, that was one of the things I never want to do. So when someone at that level shows that humbleness and that you know that you know that normality my i mean you gotta respect that totally man <laughs> we, i mean i talked to him like a regular friend he was like a regular friend so we got a, like a friendship of just like personal friends he even you know I, he's he he wants to get healthier so he wants to start training so next time he comes in he wants to come over to the house and go through like a training regimen and i was thinking of having him hit mitts this mitts is good uh good exercise so um it looks like a relationship that's going to flourish and going to be a long meaningful one yeah that's cool it's good to hear you're so grounded like how often do you hear roy the part of the royal family is really grounded i guess it must have been that time away maybe but well yeah well you know because he was in the royal family he was mm. full of money around the riches being treated with royalty and when his father had a divorce from his wife they were exiled to they were they were pretty much kicked out of Thailand and everything was taken away. So they, he was taken off the, the, any pay, any money. And oh, really? he pretty much, yeah. So the first job when he went to America, he was actually selling hot dogs in the beginning. Whoa. Yeah. So, so he's someone who's, who's felt that poverty, who's felt the struggle. And I think, man, I'm just thinking that wouldn't that be like the, for some, especially for somewhere like Thailand, wouldn't that be like the most amazing type of ruler to take care of the people? Yeah, I mean, how, what, I mean, you most royal families, they are born into royalty and never see poverty. They hear about it and see it, but they never feel it. He's lived it and he survived it and he went through it. I mean, yeah, he'll be like probably one of the greatest kings in in, in the history of any type of royalty. I'm pretty much looking forward to, you know. There's a good, there's not a set thing yet that he's the, going to be the next uh, heir to the um, crown, but yeah. um, it's, it's pretty, I mean, you, you look at the history of the family, you know, like the, the older sister who was actually going to take over, um, she has had a um, brain aneurysm in last year, December, she's been in a coma since then. And Lord forbid she doesn't make it out of it. You know, he's next in line. His other two brothers have married American women, which pretty much um, take them out of the, the chance of even ruling the country. And his, uh, you know, his youngest brother, which is the king's uh, current wife now, uh, I think he's 16 or 17. Um, he he's has like a mental disability that 
he probably wouldn't be fit to rule the country. So um, Vash is like the the best uh, representative and best, uh, you know, smart guy, compassionate, the Thai people love him. And ho, oh, I mean, someone that I consider my friend actually might become the prince of Thailand, eventually the king of Thailand is like, unfathomable for me i mean for me i'd like to always no matter what happens always see him as a friend that i met in japan yeah yeah that's really cool but yeah we'll see see how it plays out did you think he, did he come to japan often or oh this was his first trip to japan oh wow and he's already i've been messaging him and he's already messaged me saying that i'll i'll see you next month and i'm like oh shit i'm not gonna be here next month <laughs> I'm going to be in Hawaii. So I messaged him back saying, I'm not going to be back in Hawaii to December 12th. He goes, well, okay, I'll let you know what my movements are. So we're nice. in touch. We're in touch slowly messaging back and forth. So uh, Our next Thailand trip could be very different. <laughs> well, I don't know, man. See, if he's in Thailand, and of course, I'm going to message him and let him know I'm coming to Thailand, you know. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, 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 right now, his name is out. Uh, I don't know if we could actually. I almost feel like it'd be impossible to hang out with him. Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't see it happening if uh, in Thailand, unless you know we go to his place. Well, anyway, life's life's a bunch of surprises, and that's why <laughs> yeah. I love my life. Yeah, yeah. No, it's cool. Oh, it yeah, like nice. is, uh, um, you know, Thai, they're real strong Buddhists. Mm. So when we're at the temple praying together, I had this little, I, I don't know, almost like a, a intuition that hit me and said that, oh man, I should make him a bracelet. And I'm thinking, to, you know, I'm thinking to myself on the side is like someone with royalty, why would they want to wear my bracelet or, or, or to a point where I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to give him something almost like saying, oh, you can wear this when he's you know, that type of royalty thinking. Oh, but something in me told me, you know, he loved their, their really strong Buddhists. And I figured, oh, I, I got beads from the Bangai pilgrimage that I went on, the Shikoku pilgrimage. And it's a, a real special bead that is is blessed for health. So, you know, health is important to everyone. And I, I you know, I went to the hotel that he was staying at, like a $3,000 a night hotel. And I went to the hotel. Dude, I went there after training. So I was in shorts, t-shirt, and slippers. I walked into the lobby, dude. Everybody was in suits. The whole hotel was plus a shit. I, you know, for me, I'm the type of guy that don't give a shit. I'll be me no matter what, no matter where I am. But I felt so out of place. I felt uncomfortable. I almost felt like I was being rude. I was walking through the lobby, almost wanting to apologize to people because people were kind of looking over at me, seeing me walking in slippers and t-shirt and shorts. And I went to the made him and I presented him the bracelet and he seemed really happy. He seemed really happy with the bracelet. He 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 was really grateful and I'm glad about that. So he even yeah. posted on his social media about receiving the bracelet from me. That's awesome. So yeah, I'm glad I, I'm glad I decided to make it for him. You can tell when someone's authentic, right? And they are who they are when, when you know, when they don't give a shit about that sort of stuff, right? So, um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. That's awesome. Um, so today's kind of topic, I don't know. There's loads of crazy MMA news. There's loads of crazy news in combat sports. Um, I wanted to start with this. I don't even know what you want to call it. Shit show, maybe, <laughs> of an event from this... <laughs> a shit show is in the YouTube boxing with uh, Logan Paul versus Dylan Danis. Where to begin? Um, have you seen the clips online of kind of what happens in the edge? We go, we'll start at the end of the fight, right? How it ended. <laughs> I saw the clip. I didn't watch, I didn't um, order the fight or watch the fight, but I did see the clip at the end where Dylan tried to take him down and then he, he actually failed and pulled guard in boxing. And then yeah. um, I think Logan was uh, on top trying to strike and then broke away and Dylan went and attacked him and then the security came in and blah, and everything went nuts. Yeah, he's I saw swinging that at the security as well. And <laughs> Yeah, he actually took a swing at the security. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, though? Legally, in the contract, of in the rules of boxing, 
if anybody from your side enters a ring, whether it's the corner or security, it's automatic disqualification. So in actuality, in the boxing rules, Logan was supposed to be disqualified and Dylan was supposed to be the winner. Really? Wow. That is, so basically what happened and after was they, Michael Buffer, who looks so like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> announces that um, Logan, like every judge scored the first five rounds to Logan Paul and winner by disqualification, Logan Paul. So it was kind of like, I don't know. But it was, it's just the whole build, everything. It didn't really sit right with me. Like, I don't know how much you saw of it, but basically Dylan Dennis was constantly, constantly talking about Logan Wall's wife to be and say, you know, saying all this stuff about um, her and how many men she'd been with and, it was just like, whoa, okay, we don't even, we don't, we've never even seen anything like that in MMA, right? No, it's pretty rare. I don't think, can you think of a time where anyone's talked about someone's wife? Maybe McGregor? Uh, maybe there were like little comments about it or, yeah. you know, but nothing like that, man. I mean, nothing. I mean, one, the, the movement of martial arts is going into shit talking and that kind of stuff. The, you know, now you're talking about this this uh, YouTube boxing. It's now another whole new level of entertainment, a whole new level of selling yourself. You got Logan Paul going to a suicide forest in Japan and making fun of a dead body to sell, sell uh, or, or get views and, and get clicks on his YouTube. You got guys like Johnny Somali coming into Japan and Thailand and disrespecting the country and the people. Johnny Somali of, is now in jail because of it. You know, you mean, that's the whole different um movement of uh you know getting popular and getting famous so you know logan paul you know fighting dylan dennis dylan dennis is uh one of the top trolls there is and it pretty much was something that you would almost you know for me it was like it's un unfathomable in in mma but it's almost something you expect nowadays and especially when you're talking about someone dealing with dylan dennis and Logan Paul, you know, so I mean, jeez, that was, yeah, like you said, you compare it to an MMA world or sports world, that's never happened before, but it is an MMA, it is in sports, it's YouTube entertainment, and almost the, the name of the event titles it perfectly, Misfits. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, Misfits in combat sports, that's for sure. I think it's, it's, it's having these outsiders, I guess, do combat sports maybe they don't have that traditional martial arts training right where you're coming in at obviously like a white belt level and then you've got to pay your dues to really get to the level of say like someone that signs with the ufc or becomes a professional mma fighter and so because i'm guessing you're this is my take on it i'm guessing you take so many l's in the gym that you learn to respect your opponents regardless of who they are pretty much is that is that correct would you say well, yeah, I think so too. And I think a lot of the martial arts gyms are moving away from martial arts. They're more and more into sports, more into getting good, getting fights. You know, I mean, I just actually, um, ironically, I just saw a post um, from uh, uh, Salu's brother, Sa Sanji. Sanji's the burial. He posted on his Six Blades page on, uh, um, on Instagram where he talked about these four-year-old kids um, wait, hold on. He's talked about these four-year-old kids. He's he's like in the front of the class, telling them about respect, loyalty, honor, and it's like he's starting them like young, yeah. understanding yeah. the martial arts way. And that's I I believe that's one of the rare dreams that does that, and it it doesn't happen very often nowadays. And I think that's a big thing about where the movement of martial arts and you know whether it's you know. YouTube boxing is going the the shit talking and I mean any anything to sell a fight. I even you know posted something recently on my uh, Instagram and my TikTok about Chihiro going to uh, right. to Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan Azerbaijan and going. I met Chihiro. I know Chihiro. He's not like that. For him to go out of character like that and try to be a dick, I mean the stuff he did was I would if I never met him I thought he's a a prick you know and He's not. Unfortunate. Yeah, it's just crazy. I don't know. It's like everyone's 
trying to go viral. Everyone's doing everything for the views, and it doesn't matter whether you're throwing guard in a boxing fight or I don't know. But yeah, there's yeah, just a... it's, it's sad. It's... I I feel like yeah. it's sad. I know it's it's suffocating. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> and uh, I kind of tweet about this. I think it's only going to get worse. I think like that example last night where. You didn't have to watch that fight, but everybody's going to talk about that fight because of what he did. And you know yeah. someone else is going to do it again or going to do it worse. And it's just, it's going to be even more crazier things that are going to happen because people are going to, you know, try and outdo it and get more views. And it's, well, it's a, a bit of a bunch crazy of cycle. I was going through when there was the buildup, you know, I was thinking, Mark Dylan Dylan is talking so much shit, lawsuit, all this kind of stuff, thinking it's, the fight's not going to happen. Yeah, I was yeah. No way Dennis is coming. There's, he's gonna go and do all this shit, and then and just then pull, pull out for some reason. And when he was going to like the press conference, saying, "Wow, he's going pulling it pretty far." I was yeah. like, "Maybe he's just pissed off Logan and just not show up for the fight." And when I I woke up at well, it started at three in, three in the morning in Japan, so I was sleeping when the whole fight happened. When I woke up and watched YouTube, I yeah. saw it happen. I was like, "Holy shit!" Dylan actually went in the ring, yeah. and Dylan actually tried to fight. He did, kind of. Yeah, it was a terrible kind boxer. <laughs> just like throwing these like weird backhands. <laughs> um, yeah, so ah, uh, there's just so much weird stuff about it. I would have been off paying sixty bucks for that. I know, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I watched it live, but I I don't know how I didn't pay for sixty bucks, but. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I watched it for a friend. What was the main event? The KSI and uh... I fell asleep. I uh, I was exhausted. It was started really late, and it was in the UK. It was in Manchester in the UK, and I don't think oh. it must have been nearly midnight by the time KSI and Tommy Fury were. But I heard it was a terrible fight as well, where they Rick, were clinching. I, I heard some controversies on that. Yeah, something like KSI clinched seventy five times or something like that. <laughs> And it's just, and people are just kind of like, what the hell are we watching? Like, you know, and oh, it, I'm so glad I didn't stay up at 3 a.m. and yeah. pay 60 bucks to watch the fight. Oh my god, no, yeah, that sort of thing it just doesn't justify paying for, right? And I think most people knew it. It's, it's made for, for the internet, it's made for people to see it on Twitter, the clips, and see what happened. It's funny though, right? Because there was no KSI Tommy Fury like clips or anything like that because nothing happened in the fight by the sounds of it. So, oh, um, really? I'm yeah, interested to see how what's going to happen. The aftermath is uh, Logan's paw still going to continue with the um, the lawsuit? How is uh, yeah. the dance going to happen? That? I think they're still chatting shit with each other on Twitter, but or X. Um, but I don't know. E even so, like leading up, there was obviously Dylan Dennis threw the microphone at Logan Paul as well, which nearly. It's not there. The fight's over right there. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then Logan Paul says he's got Gordon Ryan to protect him. <laughs> which... That was that was pretty gay. I thought that was pretty gay. Yeah. Was as, as a professional fighter, have you ever heard anyone say anything like that? No, never, ever, ever. No, yeah, <laughs> was was a new new one for sure in the, yep. the world of of combat sports. Yeah, it was totally new. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, so you know that it's a crazy weekend from that. I don't know where this stuff goes in the future. At first, I was kind of like, okay, this is kind of a little bit of fun. Jake Paul's kind of fighting some old retired MMA fighters. No one really thinks these guys are great. And then I think some of the younger generation really thinks like these guys are like the best fighters in the world and that sort of stuff. Um, I think mean, so. So what I was thinking in my head, right? I was comparing this to in Japan because in Japan you got breaking down, right? Where yeah. you got a bunch of people coming in having one minute fights. But do people like take that with a grain of salt? Do people know that these guys obviously, you know, if they stepped in a rising ring, they get their ass handed to them? Or is it kind of they have that public misconception, do you think? Um, yeah, well, a lot of the right uh, the breaking down guys want to have that dream of fighting and rising. Mm -hmm. So I think they do have that idea that they can fight and rising. So what about what about the people watching it, like the fans? Yeah, I think they do. I don't think that they, they separate 
rising and oh. breaking down that much. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. So we got a similar problem. Yeah. Yeah, I get I guess maybe, you know, if you don't really follow combat sports and it just so happens this, the thing that you see looks like the biggest platform and you're like, you know, you make those associations, right? You don't have to know who the, the UFC welterweight champion is to truly appreciate good 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 MMA and good combat sports, I guess. You know, yeah, KSI yeah. can be your champion or what I mean, like they can be the strongest guy in the world, but that's crazy, yeah. At least there's an audience that does. Um, another crazy thing happened. We got some crazy fight replacements. How about UFC? Last minute. Yeah. I mean, so good we got- and bad sometimes, yeah, because there's, you know, the, so some that are like, like the Oliveira one, I was bummed about that, but it's like Volfanovski steps up, like, whoa. I, yeah. I, 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 that might be a more interesting fight. <laughs> I know, right? I, like, did, I did want to see Oliver have another shot, but I guess same. we'll see that later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and then you have uh, what else are the uh, Paulo, Paulo Costa, Costa out? That I was bummed. I wanted to see that fight. Oh, but I've always went to see Usman versus Chimaev, so that's a bit of a a dream fight. I've always oh, wanted yeah. to watch. Yeah, it's just we're in the same weight class. So Usman's gone up to one eighty five, so they're going to do a one eighty five. Wow. So, oh, so, so, in other words, Usman won't have a, um, a weight cut then. I wouldn't have thought so. No, I would imagine he'd probably go in pretty fresh. But because his last fight was the it was the Leon Edwards fight, wasn't it? The rematch, I guess. For oh, that was a got, while back. Huh? It was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. So I'm interested. It's been a while since we've seen him. I think it's a fun fight. Um, but yeah, I am interested yeah. about the weight class because Chimaev definitely looks shredded at the moment oh it does see oh shit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that'll be a and good fight though that'll be a really interesting fight yeah it's good they did well to pull together such a good fights considering you know it's what two it's next week i think um next weekend yeah it's like so, one week away that's amazing yeah, huh? yeah impressive um but we've got to talk about it. we just mentioned about being shredded there's a big elephant in the room <laughs> USADA is gone. And uh, uh yeah. wait, uh, by the sounds of it, UFC is going to do some kind of in house drug testing with some guy from the FBI, is is what it looks like. Uh, don't know how that one will play out, but there was a lot of fighters with all sorts of comments initially when UFC had said it, and USADA had kind of really went off for McGregor as well. Um, in their statement in passing. But I just wanted to get your thoughts on on the whole drug testing piece. Well, for when I first saw it, of course, when I first saw the, um, you know, the post on uh, USADA, I automatically thought like, oh my God, they're doing all this for Connor. And then when I saw the press conference that um, Hunter and one of the other guys, uh, that's if I forget his name, but went on and, it seems like they're actually still using, they're still going to be drug testing. There's still going to be the same type of rules. So it's not like, um, uh, I don't know if they're doing it. I don't, I almost feel like they're not doing it for Connor. Of course, they're still using another association. So not USAD anymore, but I forget what the association is called, but it, it's the one that does the NFL, NBA. So it's still a legit. Um, drug testing situation so I don't, I don't know I'm at first I thought ah damn they did shit for Connor again you know like they did for Brock Lesnar yeah. but you know when I actually looked at you know the I heard that press that press conference I don't know I, I think maybe they're just making changes and I you know I heard a lot of bad things about USADA like waking yeah. up waking up uh, guys in the like bef- I think Volfanovski is w- woken up like Six in the morning or five in the morning, the day of his weigh-ins or something, or Costa, Costa also, yeah, yeah. which is freaking ridiculous. Yeah, loads of fighters had complaints about Usada. Yeah, um, yeah. So you know, hey, maybe Usada just uh, thought they were the only ones there, and they just, you know, there was another. There's a lot more other drug testing associations that can do the job, and you got one that 
the one that went with is works with the NBA and NFL. How much bigger can that get? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely <clears throat> maybe you know, change is good, right? So maybe this will be a good thing in the long run. So I you know, I, I believe they should let them take what they want. A lot of people do. That that's the one thing I noticed that when this whole story broke, there was a lot of people online that just said just let them take whatever. Um Yeah, like look at Pride, it was so exciting. <laughs> it was pretty exciting. Um what about the health of the fighters though? Do you think about the there'll be any implications? Oh, you mean the health if they, they took steroids? Yeah, I mean, we haven't really seen it much in MMA, but in pro wrestling, there's been a lot of um, heart-related deaths because of the amount of, of steroids and that, that they took. Yeah, that would be a problem, I think. So I mm-hmm. think as far as the health of the fighters, I think that the drug testing is really good. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, fighters like like me, when I was fighting... I thought fighting was everything there was. I thought there was nothing to life but fighting. And like I said many times, the, the, a great day would be to die in the ring. And I mean, I sit back now today and think back, holy shit, I can't believe I thought that. You know, I got so much more to life now. I got, you know, I got Sarah now. I got the coys. I got the dogs. I got more travel I want to do. I still got to hit that big jackpot in Vegas. You know, so so much things I need to do yet. So I, I do not... I, I'm glad I didn't die in the ring. I even talked to Hoy, someone who actually instilled that thought in me. And he kind of looked at me and we started laughing. saying, like, what the fuck were we thinking? You know? Yeah. No, definitely. It was one of the coolest podcasts we did, right? You and Hoy talking about like the old days and how much completely different scene it was, but then also reflecting on it and going, what were we thinking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, I think so. It would, it would you know, with that in mind, I think that, mm. you know, having a drug testing agency to control that is, is uh, you know, might might make it a little less exciting, like not like pride, but I think it's a lot safer for the fighters. The fighters who really can't make the right decision right now because they're so focused on just being the best in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that, right? Fighters are focusing on what's in front of them. And, you know, sometimes having those guidelines and boundaries is going to help. Is Yeah, mm. it's helpful. Mm. All right, everybody. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, next up, what, what sort of travel you got coming up, Henson? You're always going away. When you, Where can we expect to see you next? Well, so Sarah's actually in Thailand right now. She's coming back tomorrow. And I got a week here, and then I leave for Hawaii. So I go to Hawaii to open up my shop. I go in and I open up the shop for a couple of weeks. Then I, my parents are going to Las Vegas, so I'm going to, you know, they're getting older, so it's good to, like, help them get in and out of the car, get their luggage. So they, they offered to, you know, get my room, I and, mean, you know, I can go travel with them. So, you know, I I took that opportunity. I mean, it's, it's nice, you know, when I go there, not just, I don't, it's not like I just help them. It's, I spend, I got good quality time with them. I enjoy yeah. the dinners with them. I enjoy, like, you know, my mom and me, cussing at the machine because we can't win or her calling me over. Look at what I had just made a big hit. You know, that those, you know, life's, you know, short, man. And sure. my parents are getting older. And I, I think this quality time with them is something that we both of us are going to cherish. And I'm looking forward to it. So after the Vegas trip, I go back to Hawaii again for another two weeks with the shop. And I, you know, I leave on, I leave on October 23rd and I come back on December 4th. So it's a long trip. Oh, that is a long trip. Yeah, once I get back, we're straight into training for Seal. She's a fight at the end of the year. Nice. Any news on that that you can share? Or no, no news on that. But I think uh, what what Saka Kibata wants to do is to, if he can find a an, a beast from uh, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, what is that freaking place called? <laughs> Azerbaijan. <laughs> Azerbaijan. If he can find a, a beast from there, he's there's a possibility it might be a, a championship fight for the heavyweight title. Wow. But if not, then it, um, so he's going to probably, there's a, I think the association KSI or Azubaijan, he's, uh, yeah, he's going to try and find a fighter from there. There's, there's no Japanese fighter right now that actually has enough um, wins and reputation to be legit for a title match with Siyoshi. So, um, we'll probably be see a foreigner coming in, and I'm expecting someone that's going to be pretty tough. Okay, cool. Sounds exciting. 
Yeah, I can see how why you got to get back to training then. Yep, and so she goes back to uh, in the twenty seventh. I think he goes back to uh, Extreme Couture to train oh, nice. with the boys. So yeah, he's going to be there for like a couple a month, three mm. weeks to a month. But it's, he's, he gets the best training there, man. I, every time he goes there with Eric Nick sick there, you know all the boys there training. Now you know he he trains with uh, Sean Strickland too. Sean Strickland beats him up. You know Nungano throws him around. You know, but yeah. I mean. It's awesome training there. So it makes me really happy that he's going there. I love the atmosphere. It's like Eric runs the gym. Like Eric and, you know, the, the coaches there, Eddie, Eric, um, they all run it like a family. Uh, Dennis you know, they, and Ray Sifu, they run it like a family. And that's exactly how I would run a gym. And, I mean, I am I feel, feel real comfortable and real happy that Shoshi has found a home there. Does, does Ray still train fighters as well? Yeah, and then Ray still spars with him too. He Fuck goes and know. spars with um I seen him spar with uh um Nungano. Really? Wow. Yeah, Ray is like I think he's almost my age now. I didn't I see him sparring. I'm almost feeling like Fuck, should I be sparring too? But I thought, oh, fuck that. He's different. He's special, man. <laughs> yeah, he must be built different, man. That's crazy. Incredible, man. Yeah, he's so good and he's so he still moves really good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, everyone remember to like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And uh we'll talk to you guys again soon. All right. Everybody, thank you for watching. Spread the word. We need more likes, we need more views. Spread the word, share. Like, follow, subscribe, whatever. Do all that stuff. And uh, thank you for watching. See you guys again.